a video and you'll see some footage of that here in a second. We're rolled in. Um, we're going to be shooting one of these side plates from AR500 uh, body armor and this is their non build up coat. So this is just their standard one, which they shouldn't really sell anymore. They should always have just a build up coat. In my opinion, everything should come standard with a build up coat. I don't know why they don't do that. I think it's dumb. Um, well, cheap armor is kind of their thing. Cheap armor is, yeah. But I mean, it, it, they, they cost, what, another 20 bucks to add a build-up coat to something? Just charge an extra 10 bucks or something, make it standard. But I'm not a business major, so what do I know? Um, anyway, so we're going to be shooting this plate um, because I'm never going to use these things again, so why not? And we're going to see what exactly it does because I've seen a bunch of videos where people will shoot these and say, hey, look, it stops bullets. That's great. Fine. It's steel. It's, it should. Um, but I wanted to do a video to see what happens to that spall because this doesn't have the buildup coating and they still sell these. I want to see what that does, which direction it goes, and what it does to tissue. And I don't have access to ballistics gel and it's expensive. And so the next best thing I can come up with is basically buying some type of meat product and using that to get in the way of said spall to see how deep that goes into tissue. So what I actually bought is some pork, I think they're pork chops, but they're about, oh, about an inch and a half maybe thick. Yeah, thick, inch and a half thick. And we're gonna put that inside of a cardboard box and I'm gonna put a little bit of duct tape over the top of the pork package to kind of simulate skin to the best that I can. There's no way that I can replicate stretchy, durable skin. And I'm also not gonna put it in a plate carrier because I don't have one to destroy. Feel free to send this one if you want me to retest it. I got another plate. Um, but all that aside, I really wanted to see how lethal spall was. And I haven't seen it. Have you seen a video on how lethal spall actually is in tissue or ballistic gel or anything like that? Not that I can recall. I haven't seen one. So I've seen people put it in a cardboard box and say, oh yeah, it goes through here. It's, I think it's I have seen one where a guy had it in a plate carrier. Okay, so I, yeah, I have seen those too. I've seen them in, where they put them in a plate carrier. And the plate carrier, if it's good quality, will stop. Most like probably a lot of the smaller stuff, um, but it doesn't stop the big fragments and that's really what you gotta worry about. And whenever you're presenting a pistol or a rifle, your arms are out in front. And so your arms or possibly your chin, depending on where your body armor is, how close, how much it deflects it forward, all that kind of stuff, you might catch it there or you'll catch it in your groin depending on what kind of position you're in. So long story short, you don't wanna catch the ball and we wanna see how much damage that actually does in tissue and meat. So. Um, do you have anything else to add to that before we roll in everything? Very non-scientific. Very non-scientific. Bunch of dudes just out with uh, some Walmart um, pork that we bought. So I will say that the results, because we've already done it. Like, we've already shot it. This we're, yeah. we're filming this video the night after we've shot it. Yeah. I was not surprised by the results. No, I wasn't either. I was impressed, and I, will, I won't ruin too much, but I will say I was impressed by how much just the base coating deflected. I think that was more of the curve of the plate, though. It was the curve of the plate, but also, like, whenever we hit the, the center, it did actually kind of direct it away from the yeah. body a little bit. So, I think Military Arms Channel actually talked about that some, that the the, when the spall doesn't just go straight outwards. It'll fall, follow the curvature of the plate, but it also kind of goes outwards at an angle away from the steel, and we did see that. So, we shot it with a 16-inch barrel. It's a pencil barrel I have. Uh, my custom build is in one of the other videos with the night vision stuff on it. But we shot it with a 16-inch barrel with Wolf Gold 55 grain, the 223, which is supposed to be to like 5.56 spec. It's, I'm sure it's somewhere. I don't have a chronograph or I'd check it. But we shot it at 50 yards, and at 50 yards, it won't go through this steel plate. So, uh, that's that really, fact. yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people uh, that are very respected in the community are very big proponents of AR-500 armor, mm. and it's it's fine if that's all you can afford because it is rather cheap. Yes. But I feel like there are also ceramic slash polyurethane, polyethylene. Polyethylene, sorry, yeah. Polyurethane. Polyethylene options that are cheaper. Yeah, like there's there's plates from, there's plates from Botac, there's plates the from uh, LA Police Gear, and that are ceramic composite with polyethylene or some other type of backing. If you like steel, I would get the build up later. Yes. And so, so, and a lot of things, and this is, I guess, kind of going on a rant here. People will talk about steel, it's multi hit capable. Yes. But again, if you have the build up code on here, which you absolutely need it, and you're, you're going to see why here in a little bit, um, that build up coating will only last on it for about, what, five rounds, yeah, six rounds? Five. And that's it's sort of spread out before it falls off. My, my thing is that 
Is it good that it's multi-hit capable? Sure. Yes. Should it... Should that be a factor? No, because if you should only get shot one time. Yeah. If you get shot more than one time and you're just going to stand there and let, you, let yourself get shot... Yeah, I don't, I don't if, if you're taking multiple rounds in the chest, you're probably taking multiple rounds in your whole body, not just in yeah. your chest, because not everybody's a perfect shot where they're like you said earlier. Like you said earlier that the only time that like the person that you're going up against is going to be very, very good to get yes. all these shots on your plate. Clint Smith talked a little bit about body armor in one of his videos, and he and he talked about how yeah most the shooters guy, aren't guy, good shooters; they're going to be shooting at you. Yeah, the guy that has to be shooting at you has to be good enough to hit your plate. Has to be good enough to hit your plate. And so, if you're wearing a plate, it protects your vitals, but it doesn't protect your arms, your groin, your, your legs, your girl. face. All those kind of things. So as someone who's taking pot shots at you, they may not even hit your armor. So I mean, but that's again separate video. So I should have medical gear. But if you're going to be taking or you expect to take multiple rounds on your chest, okay, fine. Let's say you take three, four, or five rounds, whatever. If you survive that encounter, replace your plate. If it's ceramic, <laughs> replace your plate. If it's steel, replace your plate because you're either the ceramics all jacked up by that point. It's now deformed. It's not usable anymore. The steel, I would argue, that has a buildup coat. Even though it can stop more rounds, it can't stop spall anymore. Replace your plate. So. I would advise people buy multiples of whatever plate they have. That way they have something to replace. And if you're lucky enough to where you have to replace your plate, who cares that you just spend $100? You're alive. So yeah. good job on that. But I would not suggest buying any sort of steel. I don't care if it's AR-500 or I think RTS makes some. There's a Spartan. There's a few other companies out there that are like kind of no names. Um, maybe there's some big ones I'm forgetting. But if you're going to buy any sort of steel body armor, which they're – you could argue it has one advantage it has is you're not gonna have back face deformation. So you're not all that blunt force trauma is gonna be spread over the entire plate. So that's an advantage, but this stuff is super heavy. It's about twice the weight of most modern ceramic plates. Does this plate here like weigh like nine pounds? It weighs around nine pounds, something like that. And if you get the build up coat, it adds more to it. So this plate weighs more than both of ours, right? Yeah, so if you get the lightweight ceramic plate, like say from Botac or LA Police Gear, now granted they're not NIJ certified, neither is this. Um, this won't stop certain uh 55 grain rounds going to certain velocities um but if you don't get one that's nij certified just know that back face deformation is something you want to look into maybe get a trauma pad to put behind it but you if you want to you can buy a ceramic plate that's still lighter than this that is nij certified like um rma makes some i had some of those plates they're like around eight pounds i think which is still lighter than this but ceramic and the back face deformation is in an acceptable condition or uh, acceptable parameters all that kind of stuff so long story short I don't see an advantage running steel. I don't see a situation where you would ever run steel unless you're really worried about back face deformation, which the military's back face deformation is even more allowance for it than the IJ is. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I have, obviously, these are the first plates I've ever had uh, for body armor. I've since replaced them with nicer things, um, but I can't see a reason not or why you would buy these over that because they're basically the same price or more expensive in some cases than the other options yeah. out there. So, again, not to get into a long rant, but here's a video of us redneck science scene shooting one of these plates to see what happens whenever that spall hits a, a pork chop, more or less. So, you have anything else to add before we show it? Nope. Sorry for the long rant. Uh, feel free to skip or add the little comment below on what time this, uh, it actually starts, or maybe I'll add it to you if people complain about it. That's fine. Um, but enjoy the video, and we'll talk about our discussion after, after we shoot it. So, enjoy. All right, guys, so we're going to be doing a video today that I haven't seen anybody do ever. So hopefully this will give a general idea about spall or splatter from steel armor. This is level three. You can see right there, level three from AR-500 armor. This is an older side plate that I have. This does not have the buildup coating. So this is just their standard coating that's supposed to help, for lack of better words, kind of repel the spall away from you. But for people who are going to be wearing steel uh not having spall hitting you in the neck. For sure, I've seen videos of people shoot steel and see what it does to Yeah, they, they've shot steel and saw what, like, what it's done to cardboard, but we are going to put these relatively thick uh, pork chops on top or above in the way of the splatter to kind of simulate tissue, say if this is your neck or your arm sticking out. I'm also going to cover it in some duct tape to try to simulate skin as best I can because meat isn't as tough as skin's going to be. So hopefully this will give a general idea of how dangerous spall actually is. Because again, we don't have ballistic shell. If you want to donate some, feel free. But uh, so this will give a general test. We're going to shoot it out at about 50 yards. We're going to set it down at the berm down there. 
and we'll see how it works. All right, so this is a setup of the plate inside of a box. And again, this is not in a plate carrier, so the box and the duct tape, which you can kind of see is covering the meat, will replicate hopefully a plate carrier material and skin. I think honestly there would be more resistance with skin in a plate carrier, but this will still give you a relatively decent This idea. is obviously very non-scientific. Non-scientific. Not scientists, not following scientific method. Just a bunch of dudes shooting meat and steel <laughs> out their range. So, predictions below. See what you're going to see. See what you think. I think it's going to go into the meat. I don't think it'll probably go more than about halfway through because those steaks are about an inch, inch and a half thick. Yeah, it'll definitely penetrate the box and the tape and the, most of the meat. Yeah, but again, this will give you a general idea of how far this would go into, say, your arm or your neck or your groin if you're wearing steel plates without any sort of build-up coating. So, all right, let's shoot it 50 yards, 55 grain, full metal jacket, wolf gold ammo. Let's find out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so that actually went into some meat there. All right, you can see the side. It hit the right side of the plate, which directed most of the spall to the right, so that makes sense. Again, this was, if you were wearing this and this was a chain... Uh, chest plate this would be your left arm so it directs it you can kind of see which direction it would direct if this was a steel plate if you hit up here it's kind of nice to know that it wouldn't go all into your neck because there's very little that actually went up and all the small stuff would probably get stopped by a plate carrier because it didn't even make it through the duct tape so the big chunks did that were directed sideways all right so we're shooting it again i just put the meat on the right side where it's digging a giant hole in the box where the majority of that spall is going. So, worst case scenario, I guess, here. <laughs> it blew out the side of the box. Yep, all right, so that was a more center shot. Oh, gosh. So. Oh, let's see what did at the top after you did more center. Yeah, whenever it was more centered, it went more up. So, again, curvature of the plate deflects spall different directions. But it was good because it actually still had the coating there because these were the other two shots. And it got more this time, obviously enough to separate the box. So, all right, let's cut this thing open. Let's see what it did. All right, so here's what it looked like before. Um, a lot of the little stuff didn't actually make it through the duct tape, so that's good. Here is the meat. Now, there is some bone over here. What hit the bone was basically stopped immediately. It kind of dug in a little bit. Uh, I would say that made it about a good, what, half inch? Mm -hmm. Half inch into this, into this pork. So, I mean, that's gonna mess you up. So again, this is as, probably as close as a, uh, maybe there's some more bone here where it hit, and it actually went into the bone a decent amount there, but where it hit an area where it was just pure tissue. Now, granted, again, this isn't a perfect scientific study here, but going about a half inch into tissue, and that's about where it stopped. Maybe it went an inch for a couple bigger pieces, but if that's your arm or your neck, you're gonna have a bad day. That's deep enough to make it to uh, major arms. So, Again, this is the why you want a build-up coat if you're going to use steel. Now, granted, it stopped most of it, so if you have a good, uh, I guess a good nylon carrier, it would stop a lot of it, but the bigger chunks, which is actually what made it through right here, are still gonna mess you up. So having a steel plate is still better than nothing, but I would highly suggest either ceramic or if you're gonna get steel, get the build-up coating. So again, take this for what it's worth, redneck science, but hope you enjoy the video. Again, I haven't seen anything like this, so I uh, hope you all appreciate it. If you all right, guys, so hopefully you just saw an awesome, really probably cringeworthy video of us shooting this plate. So here's the plate here. Uh, whenever I shot it the first time, I believe it was the lower round. And one thing I will say is I think he went boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah, I think I worked my way basically up. The first shot, low. The next shot was a little bit higher. And one thing we noticed is this is a curved plate. You can see it's curved to it. Uh, the spall, if it, so it hit on the right side of the plate from your angle, and most of the spall went this direction and followed the curve. There was very little that went that way or up, or down for that matter. So I was a little bit surprised with that. I mean, it makes sense. It's an angle, so most of it's going to continue following that angle. It makes sense, but I was just a little bit surprised by it because there's not a whole lot of curvature to this thing. The second one did the exact same thing. It blew a hole basically in the cardboard box. Some of the spall went up and well, went into the meat, but very small pieces. The majority of the main fragments followed the curve. Um, so I guess it's a good thing, so it's not going to go up into you. Now, whenever we hit more center, it, it spread pretty much in all different directions. Yeah. Like, it, it was a well-rounded <laughs> shot. 
Um, so a lot more spall went up into the meat. And that's the one that you saw. So, I mean, it stopped. You can see it stopped 55 grain wolf gold uh, at 50 yards out of a 16 inch barrel. So that's cool. Uh, it didn't punch through. It did make small little divots. There's little dents. You can feel them. Um, it did go in there. The spall coating held up pretty well, pretty well, but it did deflect it forward some. So that's a good thing. So I'm not going to say it would miss your chin, but it's not going to go straight up into your chin. It would, it might hit the edge of your chin or it might miss you completely, depending on where it hits you on the plate. If it hit low, it and might how, deflect it. Now. How tight your plate carrier is. How tight your plate carrier is. Like if you have it properly up to the right, and again, this is not a front If plate. you're a big old fat guy and it's out here, it's going to look in front of your face. <laughs> yes, exactly. But if you're like you and it's skinny and it's like direct, it's like right up against like your face. That's another thing to consider. If you've got a belly and this is kind of angled in towards your body because of your belly, you're going to eat a lot more spall on your neck than if you're like me and you don't have a gut and it's just up here. And I'm it, in. Yeah. <laughs> Jumpy. <laughs> but if it hits low on you down here, it might have enough of an angle where it misses your chin completely. Now, it's still going to, if your arms are in front of you at all, it's still going to impact catch your arms. arms. And, if, your arms up. and it's probably going to, but if you're standing up straight and you just happen to be taking a round when you're not paying attention or something, this ball might be deflected enough where it doesn't actually hit you if your arms are down to your side. So there is still an advantage to wearing this. This is still better than not wearing anything. But just wanted to point that out that it's interesting to see how it was deflected it was deflected forward even it was about what probably about this much yeah probably about that much forward so that much forward at really close angles so i mean that's a pretty it was almost probably a 45 degree angle that was deflected off of it which i was impressed with so that's kind of cool um i was not surprised by how far it went into tissue no. um again i have no way of replicating skin um and I, leather would be the closest thing i can use but that's harder than skin is so the best thing I could do is duct tape. And again, it would be inside the plate carrier, so you could add some more resistance. So it's not a perfect test. I get that. But just going into the meat, it went into about the meat, about an inch. Half yeah. an inch to an inch, depending on where it was. And most of your veins, um, anything that's on the, your arm is not deeper than that. So you're going to get cut up pretty good. It won't kill you. Um, if it, well, I don't think it could hit. There's nothing major underneath your chin. I it all goes straight wanna, up into. I still wouldn't want a bunch of steel up in. No, my, <laughs> up in my mouth, soft bits. No, <laughs> no one wants a bunch of lead fragments to cut into your skin because it's going to cut into your skin. So, would you survive the fight? Yes. Would you survive long enough to finish the fight? Yes. But do you want a whole, a whole bunch of holes in you? No. So. I don't know. I thought it was a pretty interesting test. And again, I've never seen anyone do it. And I've always wondered how lethal that spall is. Because we've all seen it dig into dirt. And it'll go pretty far yeah, into cardboard dirt. And cardboard. And, and people will shoot things. And it's like, oh, look at it going through the cardboard. But of course, it's going to go through cardboard. Well, I saw one video where it's stuck in the... He had a wooden box right and it's stuck into the wood. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. I have seen that too. So so the spall isn't as... I mean, it's not going to like you know penetrate into vital organs or anything like that. Like It's not, it's not going to go that far into your skin once it does. But it is going to go far enough where it can cause some damage. So again, wouldn't recommend steel plates simply on that, but I just wanted to do this video because I thought it was something that I would have liked to see. And so you just, I don't know, here we are. <laughs> do you have anything to add to it? No, that's... All right, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was somewhat educational. Again, uh, just kind of redneck science uh, out the range with some Walmart pork chops. But hopefully you guys learned something from it and enjoyed it. Um, hit that like, subscribe, comment below if you're interested in us doing something else. If you have any video ideas, go for it. Um, I'll be reviewing this rifle at some point and all the different things I've thrown on here. This is just kind of a custom build I've done over the years uh, just for long range stuff. But again, if you have any questions, let us know. Appreciate it.